promotional video first. Okay. Yeah. Well, at least we're like we're not having technical difficulty. Yeah, that's good. That's you, we're getting better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we get better and better and better. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, because last time we had technical difficulty. Mm-hmm. Real bad. Okay, here we go. Operation Exodus, Mississippi. What is OEM? It is the only real solution for descendants of slaves born in America. The original Mississippi campaign. Anything else is fraud and will not work. It is the process of bringing into reality the promise that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. spoke of. It is simply inspiring the so-called black residents of the state to take advantage of their voting power, having a large population who take control of the political systems, laws of their state, who benefit themselves, of which brings them power, power they never had before. OEM has nothing to do with religious, personal, or political beliefs. Just wanting to make life less oppressive in this geographical area so Blacks can feel safe and operate with less resistance due to racists forming a type of faith haven sanctuary state for Black people. OEM doesn't advocate trying to force the populace to do anything they don't wish to do, but offer advice and suggestions to improve their state for all citizens, regardless of race, creed, color, sexual orientation, etc. Some of the benefits of OEM could be, one, as a state, you could finally request reparations due to the enslavement of our ancestors from the federal government. Being such, monetary or other awards will not be going to individuals or groups, but a state now in control that benefits this people to help build what this people need to act like true, free, liberated, as well as equal citizens of this nation. Two, having control of the governor's mansion, you can control the state national guard, as well as all law enforcement of the state. Three, create a different way of living among the people to alleviate homelessness and other poverty. Requesting the citizens more modestly, opening up more jobs, more time with loved ones. Four, or for true rehabilitation, to those in criminal systems, so monies on jails can go to more beneficial purposes. Five, they can request the federal government to release all political in federal custody of those forced into a in foreign lands to be returned to or handed to Mississippi so they can live out the rest of their life in dignity. Six, Mississippi will become a true work state for every man, woman, and child can say they had something to do with the success of their state instead of credit going to a black few. Seven, being an agricultural state already, we can specialize in the production of pure organic foods that is good for our citizens. Also, can be exported to other states and around the world, having a want for people organically grown food products. Eight, success of OEM will become the blueprint an example, having not enough room for all who now wish to move. So our eyes must be set upon perhaps Alabama, Georgia, and the like. Nine, a state can function independently from the federal government, forming relations and deals in foreign lands like Africa to benefit the state and nation. The so-called Black people of America have never had true power that others respect. Doing this, we will get the respect and power we have never experienced. And the doors that will open to just taking control of your life, we can't remove. Please be reminded, if not for the domestic terrorists targeting Black people of the South and the federal government refusing to protect its citizens, forcing them to flee, this old EN campaign probably would have been made in generations ago. So all you and I will be doing is the work our ancestors wanted to do, but couldn't do due to domestic violence from other citizens. Join and organize.
Operation Exodus Mississippi today will become a supporter. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, yes, this is uh, Assistant Brother Talib to uh, Brother Talik of Reality Temples Ministries, Operation Exodus Mississippi, and um, Soul Celebration uh, Anniversary. Um, today, uh, I'd like to first of all send my shout outs to uh, Brother Craig, Brother Bakari, and uh, Brother Guy. And also, I would like to uh, just say that welcome to those in the comment section and those on the Hangout, as well as those live on Facebook. Now, uh, what this is about is what you just saw in that trailer uh, video that our good brother um, Omar Shabazz was featured in. And this is the reality. This is the only reality, the only proven reality. No one has refuted this ideal of Operation Exodus, Mississippi. You know, nowhere in social media that I know of. And uh, the situation right now that's going on is that just like Brother Talik, and I'm sure just like many of us other have tried the conscious black community for so long that it did not work, you know, and um, we see that none of it has worked going way back to the 1920s of Marcus Garvey, Noble Drali, uh, Father Divine, and other people that came through, it, and it didn't benefit our people. We seen what happened with the Nation of Islam when Malcolm X was in the uh, nation at the time and when he left. And we've seen also how that organization declined, you know, even after his death. And, and I mean, it's just the same thing, just like with the Nubians, an organization that I was involved in under uh, Dr. Malakazi York, who was known by other different names. And um, I mean, today, right now, we are at the point of extension. I mean, you know, I know, especially those of you that's in the black conscious community who um, are very in particular about our people uh, being in, being extinct, or when you hear that we're uh, uh, people that's headed for extermination, you know, it's at the point right now that that's the reality. I mean, just look around you and see what's going on. Many of us are getting killed in the streets by the police. Ain't no justice being, uh, you know, brought forth behind that situation. Uh, you know, men, it's still areas in this country, socially, while people are being discriminated against, whether it's housing, the job market, uh, education. I mean, the list goes on. So my thing is this, is at this point in time, if we do not take advantage of this ideal that me and Brother Tali came up with earlier this year hmm. uh, called Operation Exodus Mississippi, you know, um, if we don't collectively come together and put together what's going to work for this ideal to make this a success, as well as by putting all our differences to the side, you know, just like uh, the colonists put their differences to the side so they could gain their independence from the British, if you see where I'm trying to go with this. So basically, we in a situation right now where we got to put our differences to the side. I don't care if you're Christian, Muslim, Judaism, or whatever religion you belong to, or whatever other walk of life you belong to. 
It's not about, um, you know, whether you're, uh, what your sexuality is. It's not about what your status is as far as how you are uh, financially living. Is it None of that matters right now. It don't even matter if you're a drug addict, okay? It don't matter if you're an alcoholic, okay? Because at the end of the day, all of us have some type of kind of symptoms dealing with being oppressed for over 400 years here in America, you know, under our slave master, you know, who we know is the Caucasian. Uh, and I mean, it's like, and, and we're still getting dealt a bad hand by his descendants, as you can see. No matter what's happening right now with the Republican, the Democratic Party, and all that other stuff, even what was going on with Trump. Don't none of that matter right now. We are below the bottom totem pole. And once again, especially to those in the conscious community, we are headed for extermination. Like I've always said, FEMA concentration camps, which is a part of it, and also mass graves, which is a part of that plan that they got set up for us at any right given time that they could initiate. And ain't nothing going to be done about it. And that's just a fact. I mean, that's why I tell y'all, listen, y'all ain't got to take my word for it. Go research it. I mean, these, these, these folks got a plan for us. I mean, they're already using other so-called minorities in this country, which is known as immigrants, to replace us. So they won't have to feel no need of us rising up as a threat for all the oppression that they dealt us for nearly 500 years. And then on top of that, um, you know, the situation as far as what's going on right now um, with, with that situation uh, in, with uh, China, you know, it's a situation going on right now which could cause the U.S. serious problems. And if we ain't prepared for that as uh, dark-skinned descendants of slaves born in America, we gonna be totally left out while everybody else is gonna have some, uh, as far as they own culture to depend on. You know, and even there are those like the brother has stated before that is trying to adopt this same ideal by taking the state, you see. So, I mean, if the Mexicans and other different cultures is trying to adopt this ideal off of what we've created, that should say something to all of us as dark-skinned descendants of slaves born in America. So, I mean, it's like, you know, that's the situation. I mean, it's, I don't know what else to say other than that, you know. And as far as that go, I mean, you know, once again, I welcome y'all. And I'm here in St. Louis in live and living color with my brother, Talik. <laughs> Nobody ever thought that we was going to be face to face, especially with me being his uh, ad assistant. So, I mean, I'm enjoying it. And uh, I'm going to let the brother go on ahead and uh, take the floor. Oh, sorry about that. I'm int I would like to introduce our sister, uh, Rashida Strober, and uh, also uh, our brother Gary, I see. That's on the hangout once again. And uh, I just want y'all to sit back and uh, just uh, enjoy this because this is special. As far as I'm concerned, you know, I mean, these people out here chasing after these Caucasian paganistic holidays, right now, this moment is like a holiday for us as dark skinned descendants of slaves born in America. So once again, I would like to pass this on to our great brother, Talik Ibn Ra. Oh, to Rashida, I'm sorry, sister. Oh, oh thank you. That's okay, no, it's all huh. good. <laughs> Greetings, everybody. I'm, I, first of all, I would just wanna say, I'm happy to be a part of this. Um, uh, this is actually, I believe I was a part of it last year, even though you weren't doing the Operation Mississippi, but I'm honored to be a part of it because uh, the thing is, I know that brother Talik is really passionate uh, about the topics and the issues that he takes on dealing with black people in America. And as you know, for me, 
I like people that are action oriented and that are serious about what they say that, that you know that they want to do. So that's very important. So I'm very happy to be a part of it. Um, I'm support what you're doing because I think it's very important. And as the brother stated earlier, I don't see uh, anyone, you know, making any any other claims or contesting this uh, this this particular project in the way that the brother is doing it. And I think it's unique. I think it's innovative. And I think it's bold. And I think most of all, I think it's more about it's it's the action part of it. It's the uh, the solution part of it is what I really want to say because a lot of times we know that damn near everybody in the black community, especially now that we got social media, they come on, they talk about what the problem is constantly. But where's the solution? You know, it's it's rare that we hear somebody say, okay, well, this is what we need to do to solve this particular problem. And I'm not saying that it's going to happen overnight. That's not even the issue. But just to lay out a, a plan uh, and, and to constantly be thinking and putting that plan into motion and then going back and revising it is, is, is what's important to me. So I'm very pleased to be a part of it. And um, I thank you very much. And I'm, I'm going to pass it on over to who, who's next. Brother Talik, you next? I look like I'm, I have no choice. Okay. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, I want to thank, uh, I want to thank you, Sister Rashida, for being here with me. Oh, yeah. And I just want to say to make to everybody that's watching, if you could please uh, share this the link on your social media and like um, the video, because I, apparently that does something with YouTube's their algorithms and what, whatnot. So just please, you can share it. I've been sharing it right as I'm sitting here, uh, right on my social media. So, yeah. All right. Hold on a second. All right. Let me, uh, let me uh, check my Facebook, make sure that's right. Facebook is an operation. Okay, that's good. That's good. Put this up here. Okay. Put this over here. That so I can see this chat room. Okay, we, we're going to be in business. Okay. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the name of our ancestors, peace forever and, and always, and welcome to another edition of uh, what we call the Reality Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the Mighty One, uh, Ancient Number Seven, your soul brother, number one, y'all. Okay. I'm so happy uh, that. Uh, my sister Rashida is, is in the house. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, it was a we had a wonderful time in Atlanta, Georgia, sister Rashida. Yes, we did. Yes. And uh, I'm telling you, uh, my lady friend really enjoyed that play. I mean, <laughs> you know, it out. You it out. no, I enjoy her. She was hilarious, man. I'm still, I still got her comment in the back of my mind, and the way she said it, it was just like so so sincere and just like so unassuming. I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Yeah, it, it was great. Pleasure to meet you. And uh, it's the same here. The same yeah. here. I told you we was going to meet each other. Yeah. Yeah, I knew it was going to happen eventually. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, my baby sister, uh, she wanted to come to Florida and I said, well, why don't we come down there to, to uh, St. Uh, Petersburg? St. Petersburg, yep. Yep. Yeah. That's where I'm at. Yeah, so I said, we, we'll go down to St. Petersburg. Yeah. <laughs> Come on down here anytime. Come on, come on, come on. So uh, and uh, uh, we still might do that. Yeah. But right now, I got this campaign going on, and who who knows when? And if it if it takes off a little bit, you know, we have to go to Mississippi. There's right. no doubt about that. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to go to, to Mississippi. And, and if I, if I may, I know you're gonna speak, but I just want to say this because I told you this personally um, after you had spoke at. You didn't. You was tired, and you. You. I, I really appreciate yeah, you well, taking yeah. time out to come. You came. You came from a long way. You was tired, and I had asked you to speak on um, Operation Mississippi. And now you had told me about Operation Mississippi when we talked, like over the phone 
or through the Google Hangout. But I'm, I'm going to tell y'all this. And I hope that the people watching get a chance to see you speak on it in person because it's a whole nother you took it to a whole nother level. Like it's one thing to see somebody on video give a dynamic talk about something, but to see you in person to give, you know, the, the presentation that you gave at the play, it was just amazing. And from that is what really, really, to be honest with you, made me jump on board. Cause I could see the, the strategy, the planning, the passion. I saw all of that, the sincerity in it. And when you got up there and you spoke and I just, I was like, like, wow. And, and the crowd, everybody was sitting there just like hanging on your every word. And it was just, it was wonderful. So I really appreciated that. It's just a whole different ball game to hear you speak about it in person. And what I'm hoping to see you do is to do some type of campaign tour. So where you're going city to city, speaking to churches, you know, colleges, different organizations about this, because it's, it's definitely on that level. Uh, I guess the speech is done. You did it, sister. <laughs> no, no, it's a lot more. To no, it's a lot more because you got the details. You got all the details and can break it down, the nuances, and help people to because it's a campaign. And when you're running the campaign, you got to convince people to go with your campaign and make what you want the agenda. And like I said, when I sat there and I listened to you and watched you and you were there. I was like, okay, I get it. I'm on board. So that's that was very important to me. So like I said, I, I'm hoping you're able to tour. Yes, ma'am. I, I hope so too, because that means we really making some progress. Yeah. This is a a, a big, uh, you know, something that that is on a very a high level, you know, magnitude here. I mean, we talking about national. It has to become a national uh, movement. Right. You know, something small is not going to. It's not going to be effective. Uh, it's going to have to take something really big in order to get us something. And so it's, it's, it's going to have a, a lot. To, I mean, if the people are going to do it, I'm ready to roll. Yeah. You know, they decide uh, they don't want to do it. Oh, well, you know, that's, 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 you know, nothing you can do about it. But if they people want to do it and we're going to do it and uh, that the success. Oh, man, we're going to talk about that in just a second. You know, it's just incredible. But uh, excuse me a second. Yes. Um, yeah. So. Uh, Thank you, Sister Rashida. Thank you. Uh, You're uh, thank you, Brother Gary's in the house. My brother Gary is in the house. Uh, he's in the chat room. He's just sitting in back in the cut. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, if you want to say something real quick, Brother Brother Gary, you can. No, go ahead. Continue. Okay. All right. And uh, we got my brother Leon in the in the, in the uh, chat room, and my uh, sister Bridget and GL. And uh, Syrian, and we ready to roll here. I want to, uh, no, thank you. Uh, I want to uh, thank you once again for all those who are watching now and those who will be watching this presentation uh, in the future. I thank you so much for giving us an opportunity to come uh, before you and speak our little piece. And hopefully I can say something uh, to us this afternoon that will cause you uh, inspiration and Get on board what we call this, you know, this soul train. I want to say, uh, of course, got to send my shout outs to uh, those who are on Facebook. This is, a, again, a simulcast uh, presentation to my brothers and sisters, uh, friends on Facebook. I want to give greetings out uh, to, to them. And of course, uh, those who are close to the Realities Temple, I want to send a a shout out to our sister uh, Ingrid and uh, sister Brittany and uh, brother Craig, brother Guy Nollywood, uh, brother Bakari. I said it right. Yes. <laughs> I always get that. <laughs> I always get that brother's name right. I keep getting it confused with Barack Obama. And uh, <laughs> I don't know why I keep getting that brother's name uh, uh, confused with Barack Obama, but I got it. I got it right. I'm proud of myself. And uh, I want to send a shout out to Brother Maurice Muhammad and those who are like a, I guess you could say, like a springboard from this platform. They are uh, exploring the options of a small town. And um, what's, the, what's the town, brother? Uh, oh. Mombayo. Yeah, Mombayo, Mississippi. They, ex they explored a, a small town in Mombayo, Mississippi. And 
uh, we wish them, of course, the best of luck because their success is our success. We're all on the same team as far as it's concerned. You know, we're going to Mississippi. I want to send a shout out to the son of man, Brother Marvin Muhammad. And I had a brief conversation with Brother Marvin, the new nation of, of Islam. Uh, as soon as I be, uh, as soon as, as I am able to touch down, want to touch down to Mississippi, got to go see Brother Marvin Muhammad, the new nation of Islam, in a small uh, town called Red Lick, Mississippi, Lorman, Lorman, Mississippi. Got to go see them. These brothers and sisters have been there for years. They got it going on. I, I, I almost really self sufficient, doing some great work there, and we need to to, to show. Uh, we need to show uh, our people, you know, when our people are doing great works. So, uh, what? Who else did I? I didn't want to miss no nobody. I, I think I covered that. So, with that said, let me get another taste of this little water. I don't know why all of a sudden I got a dry mouth. It's incredible. What's up with that? But we wanna. I'm not gonna try to hold you long. I hope that you are here for the the whole ride today but i'm not i'm going to try to go through this quickly but efficiently and uh again hope to inspire us and probably perhaps give us just a little bit more understanding on this campaign called uh operation exodus mississippi the this the, the official kickoff uh we presented this idea back in march of, of this year and i sent a uh, a dvd actually to minister lewis farrakhan uh, of the Nation of Islam. I have not heard anything back. And they said the way I talk about the Nation of Islam, <laughs> I probably won't, probably won't hear nothing back. <laughs> but it's all good. It's all good. And I, I presented uh, this idea to the Nation of Islam back in March and just been kicking it. People have been asking me, y'all ain't doing nothing. I never said we was going to do anything. I just want to put it out in the air to see what type of response. And so far, we've been on YouTube and we've been on Facebook and a few other social media, and so far uh, we've been getting a real good response. So why not officially attempt to do this type of thing? Let's kick off this 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 campaign. You know, we can't we can't do no worse than what we're doing now. That's a guarantee. So damn, my mouth is so dry. What's up? Because we know you're finna talk. You're finna say something. <laughs> what to say? You think so? <laughs> <laughs> It's all good. Oh, man. My, my uh, mouth has never been this dry before. I don't know what's up with that. Maybe you're right. I don't know, uh, sister. Maybe I don't know. Maybe you having some kind of effect on me. All that womanhood you got out there. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Is my sister around? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, they, they friends. They friends. Yeah. <laughs> <We are. laughs> I'm gonna sit over here and get myself in trouble. Oh you know, God. Let me take the video down. Oh. <laughs> 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 all that. You know, you knew I couldn't be there and I see what you do behind my back. <laughs> oh my God, no. Oh. No, she ain't nothing like that. She ain't nothing like that. Oh, it ain't, it, you know, it ain't like that because, you know. Uh -huh. Kind of like light skin boyfriend, so like light skin. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I alone, though. I just had to throw that in there. <laughs> a dark skin activist with a light skin boyfriend. <laughs> oh my god! That's okay. another subject. That's another subject, y'all. We're gonna have to go to the shit. The dark skin activist, and she got a light skin boyfriend. Wow. <laughs> Matter of fact, this is the second one. This ain't like it's the first. Oh my God! <laughs> this is the second. Oh, actually, hold up. Oh, the third one. <laughs> but but wait a minute. Hold up. Hold up. Now I was married to a pitch black, blue black, dark okay. skin man for ten long years. Okay. That means something. Okay. But I digress. Operation Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I want to hear about Operation Mississippi. <laughs> I did, I did want to, but I don't know. It's starting to find seem to be more exciting getting into your personal life. Oh, no. 
dark skinned actor. Mm-hmm. I have to write another play about it because I just uh, yeah. yeah. Angel, Angel Snow, no, he drives me to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it. Sorry. I'm, I can take the heat. I can. I can dish it out and I can take it. Okay. All right. but I want to hear about Operation Mississippi. Yeah, okay. Here, okay. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Uh, as you saw, um, my brother, assistant uh, to me, uh, he's here with me live. Uh, y'all seen live and living color, brother to leave. And uh, he got here a little later than I thought he would get here. And I wanted to go um, to visit the crazy house, actually. I did. And I thought it was important to go visit the crazy house because I wanted to make a video. And I wanted to show you where I was liberated from. You know, this is operation. This is, this is uh, about our liberation. Soul Liberation Day. It's about our liberation as individuals as in my case, liberated from the crazy house. And all of us go through drama, all of us have problems, and we go through these different things. And many of us, fortunately, we liberate ourselves from these different problems. Unfortunately, as you live, you're gonna keep liberating because that's what life is, it becomes a whole lot of problems. You know, but that's what it's about. But this was a major problem <laughs> for me, 10 year problem, you know. So I wanted to go to the crazy house just to just to revisit, just to make a a, a, a brief uh, speech, and I, I'm going to do that right now. Um, mm. See, the crazy house for me as a person, the crazy house represented injustice and suffering. That's what it represents. The crazy house for us as a people is the United States of America. And we have been in this crazy house and this insane asylum going on 500 years. Now, I'm free and I'm speaking with us to this afternoon. And the reason why I can do that is because I was liberated from that situation. But I did not and it was not liberated just because that's what I wanted because I have forces against me 24 hours a day. And we as a people in this nation, we have forces, including forces, not only external, but eternal, internal, that's working against us. But how was I able to liberate myself? And the reason why I was able to liberate myself from that situation, which was called impossible, I was told, that without our cooperation, without our permission, I would not go nowhere unless I did what they wanted me to do. And that's take their medicine. And they wanted me to take this, this psycho medicine and they wanted me to confess that I was a criminal. And I refused. I said, I would rather be dead than confess to something I am not. I am not a criminal and I am not insane. I'm not going to do it. So I had put in my mind and had already accepted the reality that I'm a dead man. I was going to die in this place. That's how serious it was. But as time went on, light came to the end of this tunnel and within this tunnel. And that light was what I call right knowledge. I'm not talking about something that's emotional. Because I was emotional for the whole time I was there, I was emotional. I called the white man the devil when I was locked up in there. I called him the devil, I called him the children of Adolf Hitler, and I said all kinds of things that made myself feel good. It felt good calling the white man the devil right there in his face. And when I finished calling the white man the devil, they said, you can now take your ass back to your room and sit down. Because we go home every day and we're going to spend the evening with our family and you're going to spend the evening with these folks. So I felt good saying that, but it did not change my reality. It filled me with emotion, but it did not change my reality. You know, it made me 
feel good. I like saying that. Make it feel good. But it did not change my reality. My reality did not change until I began to grasp the right knowledge. Not just any knowledge. Knowledge is good. There are many of us. We love knowledge. I hear them on YouTube all the time. You know, knowledge. Knowledge is power. Yes, knowledge is power. Yes, it's good to have knowledge. And, you know, uh, I have in vogue, in the, hi, hi, Terry. Uh, I, I have in vogue behind me. Some of these persons, they want, they want you to know that they have all this knowledge. And they have all these tons and tons of books. I've been, I've been doing a lot of reading. I'm so smart. I am so great. I, and not only can I read like this, but some of them may even have the college degree. I went to Harvard, maybe, perhaps, and I went to uh, Yale, or maybe, perhaps, I went to Morehouse or whatever. I went to. I'm so they full of knowledge, and there's nothing wrong with knowledge. There's nothing wrong with that. That's not the problem. The problem is when you put yourself in a situation and you come upon a problem, you must seek right knowledge. Because if my car breaks down, I cannot use a plumber's manual to fix a car. It's knowledge, wonderful knowledge to have. How to go into, you know, fix pipes and things of that nature but I'm trying to fix a car. It's the wrong knowledge for the situation that I have here, the problem that I'm facing, it's the wrong knowledge. So if we who are part of this black conscious community, Afrocentric community, however community, black community, however you wanna say it, if we've been going on in this nation, going on 500 years with this problem and this problem has not been solved and we have all this knowledge and the problem has yet to be solved, then clearly it's the wrong. I know, I know, some of y'all don't want to hear that. It's the wrong knowledge. Clearly, it's the wrong knowledge. And I know you feel good about your more science temple. I know you feel good. You in the Nuwabian nation, I know you feel good. Assalamu alaikum, I'm in the nation of Islam and, I, and I, I, I'm, I'm part of the new Black Panther Party. I'm part of the, the new UNIA, I, I'm part. Makes you feel good, sound good. Make you get a lot of emotion. But there are thousands of you, thousands, not a few hundred, not, not me and my 10 subscribers, you know, we can't do too much. It's just me and my 10 subscribers, we don't count. But uh, it's thousands of you who are committed, thousands of you who are BG, thousands of you who are Nation of Islam, and I could go on and on and on, thousands of you who are Christian, and you can't change your condition. You're Christian and you're Muslim and agnostic and all, all these things and we can't change our condition, but we say that we have Knowledge, some of y'all said that y'all even have the truth. Some of y'all even said that you have right knowledge, but it's not changing our condition. Why is that? Because clearly it's not right knowledge because if you take that, if you take that manual that was designed for that car and your car has broken down, that's the right knowledge for your situation. You should be able to fix your car because you have to have the right appropriate knowledge for your situation. It's not working, it's not the right knowledge. It's not the appropriate knowledge. And also you have to have the correct mindset, the right mentality in order to go in to fix these problems. You can't, you know, in order to fix a car, you have to have a certain uh, attitude about fixing the car. Not, I don't wanna do this, that's the, you defeat yourself. You can have the right knowledge, but you defeat yourself because you're not into this. So. You might even have the right knowledge, but you won't use it correctly because you just don't have the right attitude. So you have to take all these things into consideration. But most importantly is the correct knowledge, the right knowledge. And we don't have it because if we had it, we would not continue to be on social media 24 hours a day, day in and day out, complaining about this condition and asking, what can we do? What should I do? What did I do? 
You know, you're still doing the same thing. So here we are. And the, this truth has arrived. But y'all don't want it. What is this truth? What is this solution? There's only one real solution. There's only one correct knowledge. And that is what we call Operation Exodus Mississippi. It's the answer. It's the solution. Now we, yeah. And I want you to, to debate me. I want you to challenge me on this. I want you to do that. You won't last long. That's guaranteed. Because, like I said, all these other things, y'all have been trying. It's like putting a round peg in a square hole. You can't do it. It's not getting the job done. You don't like the truth because maybe you don't like Angel snuffing up seven. That's bad business. It's bad business. You should like, if I'm thirsty and I really need water, you can't trip off, well, I don't like that kind of bottle. When you're really thirsty and you need to quench yourself, it don't make no difference where, what vessel that water is in. The only thing you want to know, can I drink that without it killing me and quench my thirst? That's the most important thing. I love all of us. I love all of us out here in the community. We are the best produced by our community. We really are. We are the best. And all of you, all of us have water that's good to drink. And I'm not going to deny. I listen to those who are comedic. I listen to my Christian brothers and sisters. I listen to uh, the Nation of Islam. I listen to, to uh, those who are in the Black Panther. I listen to all of us. I'm not tripping off the vessel. I'm listening for that truth. I'm listening for that right knowledge and bring that right knowledge together. And when you, if you bring it all together, you're going to get Operation Exodus Mississippi because that's what it is. It's about adjoining. It's about unification. Some of y'all don't want that though. Y'all want a slave plantation. Really. You don't really want that. You want, you really want to copy your masa. And you really want people to be like you. You want to bring folks onto your plantation. That's not what we're doing here. I'm not trying to convert you to no religion. I'm not trying to convert you to no ideology. I want to convert you to your liberation. Once you get free, I don't know what you're going to do. I just want us to be liberated and free from the press. Once you get liberated, that's the first step. That's the most important step is your liberation. I don't care all the other stuff that you're talking about. If you're not liberated, if you're not free, it means nothing. So you can be committed, but you still live with your racist oppressor. What do that mean? I'm an African. Don't mean nothing. You're still living with white folk. I'm a Native American. I'm a It don't mean no difference. You're still living with white folks and you're still being oppressed. So what? I'm a Christian. You're still living with, the, with, the, with an oppressor. So what does that or don't mean nothing? You don't act like. And we don't even act like, I don't think we take this serious. We don't act like oppressed people. We always complaining. The white man is. And the, ooh, sister, you done joined the, the video call two times. <laughs> sister Rashida on the video two times. <laughs> she want to hear this double. <laughs> <laughs> now I want to join in under my other, my main account. I realize oh, I don't know my main account. Oh, okay, all, all right. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, we don't act like an oppressed people. So I don't think that you really take yourself serious. Do you take yourself serious? How can we call ourselves an oppressed people and people looking at us, oh, those african Americanists, they always talk about they oppressing the white man and the, and the gender mendering and whatever other complaints we always have in this country. We oppress people always doing something to us police brutality, but look how we live it. Driving the fancies of cars. You know, a lot of us even show off our money, houses. We got a husband, maybe more than one. Got a wife, maybe more than one. I mean, we don't act like an oppressed people. I don't think we even take ourselves serious. So if we don't take ourselves serious and we're not taking this situation serious. And that's why you can't you, you can't unite with Angel Snub Nub Seven. That's why you cannot unite with 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 those brothers and sisters who come at it, or Nation of Islam, or any of us. You cannot you cannot connect and want to unify because you don't. You're really not 
um, you really don't feel that you're an oppressed people because if you felt oppressed, just like Malcolm said, by any means necessary, any means necessary, I don't have to like you. You don't have to like me. We have a common enemy. And once we get this common enemy off our back, then you can, you can go do what you was doing. But we have a common enemy. We have common problems. And if you really want a solution to that, then we must come together unified. But you're not doing that because you're not oppressed. Because you eat three meals a day. And you're comfortable. That's why. You don't need me because you eat every day. You don't need me to eat. You don't need Louis Farrakhan to eat. You don't need Al Sharpton to eat. You don't need Umar Johnson to eat. You don't need nobody. You don't need nobody. That's the reason why you do what you do. I'm doing my own thing. But you're still oppressed living in America and you complain that you got a problem. I'm doing my own thing. Because you don't need me until we realize we need us, then nothing's gonna change. Until we begin to embrace right knowledge, nothing is going to change. Nobody takes us serious because we don't take ourselves serious. When I was locked up in that crazy house, people did not want to be around me because the only thing I talked about was, I want out. I want out. I want out. They'll bring some girl or female to my room late at night when things is all quiet and things is you can you can do some things. I told her get out. Yeah, but I got I got all and she was looking good. Some of them. Now I'm not prejudiced or nothing, but the, as soon as the white girl showed up at 12 midnight, you got to get out. I ain't a white girl. I'm sorry. Y'all got to get out. But some of the sisters would come to your room one, two in the morning. And some of them was, um, mm, and, uh, you know, but I had to tell them, you got to get out. Because my liberation and my freedom is more important than whatever you think that you're going to bring me tonight. I want out of here. I want out. I want out. I want out. See, some of y'all do the same thing. You know, your penis and your vagina control you. That's more important than your liberation. You know, watching the Real Housewives of Atlanta is more important than your liberation. Here you got a situation in Chicago. They keep talking about the high crime rate, the, the high crime rate in Chicago. Some of that can be instantly stopped if you had real men that lived in Chicago. Because as men, these men get together and they tell the criminal element or whoever is in that neighborhood say, uh, I don't know what y'all are doing, uh, but you got to get out of here. You know, my grandmother wants to spend time on her porch without bullets flying over her head. Our children need to go to school without bullets. And I know y'all need to make a living selling drugs or prostitution, whatever y'all are doing now, but you can't do it here. Go find some weak men and you can do that in that neighborhood but you're not going to do that here. Men could do that. And men understand that some men might have to die in the process, but it's all good because you're not going to bring that here. And any criminal element will leave because they don't have time to be messing with problems like that. They're going to live. That's bad for business. They would rather go somewhere where they don't have to deal with crap like that. But I'm not making mockery. I'm just doing making an observation. If there were real men, see these men work jobs, eight, 10 hours, whatever. The only thing they want to do is go home and get a beer and, and, and tell their wife to strip after the football game is over. That type of thing. They have no concern in the protection of their neighborhoods, their community. That's not the mentality of a man. Men, from what I was told, y'all tell me that, I'm, that men are supposed to protect and provide for their family, their women, and their, their children. So clearly the men of Chicago and any of, the, of these other black communities, and you have all this high crime rate from a criminal element, clearly the men are not doing what they're supposed to do. 
we're going to wait for the police. I mean, of course, you know, you're going to have to respect the police. They are the authority. But uh, as men, we have a responsibility. And you tell the criminal element. Matter of fact, most of these persons are our own children. We know who these people are. They are our, well, sometimes it's female, but y'all know most of the times it's male. You know it's your nephew. You know it's your daddy. You know it's your cousin. We know who these people are. We need to set our people straight. We need to have our get our people to do better. We know who these people are. But you're not men. You're not men standing up. And see, this is the reason why we have a Cynthia G. This is the reason why we have China Fox. This is the reason why we have all these sisters out here crying because, see, they cried out looking out for men. Because if we stood up as men, control and get the men together, Cynthia G has nothing else to say. What else can she say when you're doing what you're supposed to do? All these women that y'all said bash black men, they have nothing to say when we as men do what we're supposed to do. Even if it means we go to the grave. Matter of fact, it makes us look even better in the eyes of womanhood because they were like, man. Oh shit. All right. All right, thank you. Uh sorry for that little interruption there, y'all. But it makes us it makes us look better when we're doing what we claim that we're supposed to be doing, that is to protect our women and children, protect our community. It makes us look better. So when you're doing that, what else can they say? Running around here, Cynthia G got a uh, weave and makeup and and all that and, and so and so is fat. That makes you that makes us look more pitiful and pathetic. That's what that's all that it does. The the hair headed hooligan and all these names that we call our sisters. When you become a man and show these women that you are a man, when they see your strength, whatever you want, believe me, you don't have to ask. They're gonna give it to you. When those women want know that you want them to have natural hair, watch, they'll just start doing it. You don't have to get on YouTube and they should wear natural hair. They should not, no. When they have, when they want to please their man and she knows that her man wants her with her natural hair, she'll just do it. You don't have to worry about all that. She just do it. But when you don't want to take responsibility for yourself, then you need to point the finger and get the pressure off yourself. And y'all never point uh, uh, the, uh, the finger at the real problem, which is living in a racist society. That's the problem. But that's how it is when you're dealing with people suffering from abuse. People suffering from abuse point fingers at everybody except the abuser. He was a man. Hmm. In the comic section, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this here. Somebody said black men are expected to fight the whole world. How can you fight the whole world when you ain't done nothing in your own neighborhood first? So who is stupid enough to expect you to fight the whole world? You can't even fight in your own neighborhood. So clearly somebody is really overstepping. Fight for your own personal family, your wife and your children. There should be no such thing as a black man being forced to pay child support. That's your baby, that's your life. No court, no law should have to tell you to pay for your child. I, you should not even want nobody to pay for your child. But for those who don't responsibility, it's pointing finger thing until men begin to step up to the plate and be men this condition is not going to change because only a man can move this only men can move this there's a reason why the caucasian racist called us boy that's the position that he put us in boy and he still call us boy not in our face like they used to still call you boy. And if you go down south, sometimes they still tell you, call you boy. 
but they try not to make it like something racist, but they, you know, they call you boy down south. Look, we waste our time with these senseless debates. I mean, they're good, but again, they're not appropriate for the time. Talking about, am I African or am I an uh, Aborigine? How, is that how you pronounce it? Aborigine, whatever, I'm a native. What difference does it make? This is what you are in America. Reality check, you is a N, blank, G-G-E-R in this. This is what you are. Matter of fact, you even call yourself that. Whether you're supposed to be an African or a native, it don't make no difference. In this society, you are in blank, in G -G -G -E -R. That's what you are. Nobody tripping off of that. And it's to the point where you even call yourself that. So we don't, that's senseless debate. We become hypocrites. Some of y'all, you love melanin. I, I just love being black. And, you know, you talk about, Pro black, blackity black, y'all so it. I love the melanin. It ain't nothing finer than somebody that's black, black. But then at the same time, when some of y'all get angry and upset, and see when you're angry and upset and become emotional, the real you comes out. And so uh you love black and you love melanin, but then you'll turn around and call somebody like me or Tommy Sotomayor, brother Tommy Sotomayor, you, you'll call us crispy. And crispy is a word that you use to make mockery of those who have dark skin. Ain't that right, Sister Rashida? Absolutely. See? I was hey. always against that whole thing. Um, I'm, I ain't even trying to break up no names, but I remember when I had somebody present that to me a couple of years ago, I'm like, wait a minute, hold on. Like you're saying, it's a walking contradiction. You want to preach blackness and you want to be black, but at the same time you want to demean blackness. I can't, I can't respect black people behaving like that. I don't even want to be bothered with them. Absolutely. Those type of black people are despicable to me because it's either you in or you're out. You can't be towing the line like that. You can't be insulting blackness and then talk about you pro-black. That don't work. No. And actually. The person that actually brought that to my attention really was Tommy Sotomayor because he said, why are you calling me Crispy, Coon, Uncle Tom? All these words come from the racist slave master. That's where they come from. So right. here you are, you, you don't like white people and you, you, you don't like the racism and all, but you're using all these uh, racist uh, you know, terms that came from the slave master and their children. That's where it come from. You're so dumb, you can't even come up with your own uh, words to make mockery of somebody. You actually are stealing words that have been used for 400 years. And we know what they meant. Some of these words, coon and Uncle Tom and crispy and all, and nigga and negro. Some of these words were some of the last words many of our people heard before they was lynched, before they was killed. So why would you want to continue to we use the word. Why would you want to use the word nigga? And I heard recently, even Tommy Sotomayor was talking about he needs to stop doing that because it all we know where it all comes from. Oh, oh, oh I'm not saying nigga. I'm saying nigga. You know, N E G G A or however they said nigga. No, you know where that what it comes. Well, from. it's to the point that uh, black people have even sanctioned, which I got a huge problem with, and then got into debates with white people over this. Um, sanction white people white white rappers using yeah. the word nigger no you don't get a pass no 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 <laughs> stuff like that enrages me yeah. but i'm trying to keep it it's all a part of the discussion of operation mississippi because yeah. i see operation mississippi as an actual solution and i'm a solution oriented person i like i listen to people talk I listen to the scholars, I listen, but at the end of the day, there's something called policymakers. Right, That's right. why in American government, the way that and, we and got this country, and they, and know, they have the scholars yeah. and then those scholars are in think tanks and they become policymakers. 
Mm -hmm. They become lawmakers to say, this is how we want things. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with what I feel black people need to do. We need to, we actually did this after slavery and during reconstruction. So it's not anything new to us. I just kind of think we got comfortable uh, with after civil rights, but we need to go back to uh, politics. Mm -hmm. we, we need to go back to government, self-governing. Mm -hmm. We need to go back to that and quit talking because a big part of the problem, I, I heard you talk about the men taking responsibility um, and that kind of thing. Uh, I'm a traditionalist. I believe that, well, well, I don't know if you want to necessarily call it a tra traditionalist, but I believe that the man should be at the head. Mm -hmm. That's just my belief. So, but we, we we got we have things so messed up as a result of slavery and everything that we've gone through that everything is kind of off balance. But again, that's not the solution it, to continue to talk about it and beat a dead horse. It's to say, okay, this is what it is, but this is what we're gonna do. Absolutely. This is the solution to to the problem. And I know I, I just have to say this. You know, my father was in the Nation of Islam for a long time. And one thing I could say about him, I'm gonna go off of his example, is that he was a solution oriented man that was at the head of his household. So I saw that and I understand what that means. I understand a man stepping up and saying, okay, this is the being a leader. That's what we gotta do. And it does no good. I'm just gonna say this. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I don't really listen to a lot of what's being said by black women on YouTube, but I'm gonna say this right here. It does absolutely no good to bash black men in regards to le the leadership capacity. Critique, yes. Bash, no. Mm -hmm. It's about a solution. Critique them. Anybody could do that. Critique me. Mm -hmm. But critique towards a solution. If you're not going to critique towards a solution, then you're the problem. You're just a talking head. And I personally don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. So that, that's that's my whole thing. Black women have got to understand the situation that we find ourselves in in America that's dysfunctional. But then we got to say, we got to correct this. We can't be out here saying, oh, F these black men, you know, let me go and swirl. Let me go. That's that's running away from the problem. That's not going to help. That's called, you know, that's genocide to me. Mm -hmm. So it's all about figuring out a solution and then implementing and of course, everything ain't going to always be smooth. So then you go back in and then you, you know, you look at it and see what the results were, see what you need to change and then revamp and continue to do that. That's what we need to be doing. So it's all a part of action and solutions. And that's that's how I'm seeing uh, Operation Mississippi. It's mad. It's mad. And, uh, and uh, somebody, somebody, uh, somebody uh, that, uh, uh, it is okay. okay. All right. Okay. Um, so we need to take ourselves serious. If we don't take ourselves serious, then all this becomes a, a, a joke. It becomes a, a joke. We have to stop being uh, hypocrites to ourselves. See, brothers and sisters, many of us, we think that we have all the time in the world. We think that time is going to wait for us to get our act together. That's not how things work. For as we know right now, time might be gone right now. We, we don't know. But, you know, until it's clear that we've run out of time, then we need to do what we can appropriately and use that time that we have wisely. We don't have all the time in the world. So we want to play with time, but time waits for no one. Time is not going to wait until we get it together and get it right. I talk to brothers and sisters all the time and they think they have time to get it right. No, you don't, you don't have time. You don't have time like that. But who would play with time? Who would disrespect time? Well, there's only one person that really could disrespect time. And that's those who are dead. 
those who are dead because there is no time for those who are dead. So I was in the nation of Islam and they told me that the Caucasian people called us Negro. We was called Negro at one time. And they said that the G in Negro, N-E-G-R-O, the G is, is interface from the Greek. You can use a C or a K, which turns the, the Negro into Necro, and Necro is the prefix for like necrology, which means the study of the dead. Those with a dead mind. So if we were Negroes or we have dead mentality, then this is the reason why we play with time because we're dead. Time really don't exist. So that's why you can just think that you got all the time in the world because you're dead in the mind. You're playing with time because time don't exist in your, in your mind. Those who respect time, if you look in the, in the animal kingdom, that which is alive, that which is alive respects time. So the ant knows that it's time to gather certain things and harvest because time is going to mean cold weather. So I got to get ready and adjust for the time. But see, the dead don't have to adjust for the time. It can be winter, it can be spring, it can be fall, whatever. Don't make no difference for the dead. Because time don't exist. But when you are alive, the bees respond. The birds respond. The deer respond. Any life form that is alive responds to time. Because they know if they don't make it in time, they'll be like in the case of the, of the ants. If they don't do what they need to do before winter hit, hits, they know they can start to death. Right. If they want to live, you have to respect time. And we don't respect time. So you think, well, I, I do. See, you really know. You know that you need to unify with Angel Snub Nub 7. You need to unify with Brother Gary. You need to unify with Brother Talib. We know that we need to unify with each other. But uh, we're going to take our time, you know, when the right time go by. See, that's not how it works. That's because we have a dead mentality. Time don't exist for you. Because when you're living and you know the only way that I can exist, I got to have these persons with me, whether I like you or not. Only a dead mind. Operation Exodus Mississippi. Why is it important? Operation Exodus Mississippi is a lie. It's an accord with time. It's bringing us the right knowledge, all those things that we're talking about. It cannot be successful unless we create real men and women and children, unless we create unity, otherwise it cannot work. It's on time and it's on for you. It is the answer to our prayer that we claim that we've been waiting for for a long, long time. The problem that we have right here is that we are doing good things. Brothers and sisters, look, we're doing good things. Many of our ideas is, is very good. The problem is, it's too many of us doing too many things. That's the problem. When you're trying to deal with cancer, you don't shoot cancer all over the body, all willy-nilly. You concentrate on the cancer, and it's a direct attack. But the way we're doing it, it's a little bit over here, a little bit over there. That's not you're, not, you're not going to be effective like that. You have to become one direct. That's what makes a laser beam so powerful. Don't you know that a laser beam, don't you know light is filled with rays, all types of rays? And a laser beam is light. But the difference between the laser beam and the regular light that's shining on my face right now is that that light becomes concentrated. And that's what makes it powerful and makes it dead. This Operation Exodus Mississippi is like that laser beam. We're taking all of our ideas. What I'm presenting to us today is nothing but a foundation, but we're taking all our ideas and bringing it as one to make that laser beam. That's what we're doing here. 
It's too many people doing too many things. We need to concentrate on one, one thing and make it strong, make it like that laser beam and focus and stay on the course because it's the way to go. If we don't unify, if we can't get this together, then we as a people are, we're just dead. We're just dead men and women and children walk. Because the right situation, brothers and sisters, look, this is the time that we're living in. We've already been given warning. You had Hurricane Katrina, the best example. Look what happened to our people there. We also had the recent hurricane in, in Texas. We need to be looking out for ourselves instead of waiting for FEMA. And if the right situation happens in the world, brothers and sisters, we don't have no nowhere to go. Now, people are running to America right now from Guatemala and whatever. But if something happened in America, what are we going to do? They are setting up sanctuary cities for immigrants coming to this country. Where we've been here abused and neglected and done unjust, oppressed, going on 500 years. Where is our sanctuary city? Where is our safe haven? Where can we go when we are being oppressed, when we become refugees? Long time ago, you know, they ran us from the south and we ran to the north. There was a place that we could go. But now, where can you go? What can we do? If we cannot do this, brothers and sisters, if you think this is not serious and you want to take it for a joke, then because none of, none of the things that we're doing is going to ever work. That's just the bottom line. I'm telling you that. It's not going to work. So why don't you stop complaining as a man, stop complaining as a woman, and just take your, take your whipping. Stop all this crying. Oh, the white man is doing this. And, you know, I used to be like that. I used to be like that. I used to be like that, too. All oh, the white man this. And if, if, if they didn't take down my videos, you know, I really wasn't crying like a lot of these cats do. But I did blame the white man. But, I mean, that gets old. Oh, the white man do this. Yeah, sure do. Man do that. They start getting old. Get, get old fast. Oh. You know, my videos getting taken down because I'm talking about what the white man has done. <laughs> but it gets old. It gets old because we understand the white man. We understand that part. But you know you're not going to get no help from the white man, and you have to depend on yourself. What are you going to do? What are you going to do to change this condition? What is the solution? The solution is Operation Exodus Mississippi. Operation Exodus Mississippi is the catalyst. It's the foundation. It's the base that you use in order to get everything that we want. You want reparations? You can ask for that, but asking for reparations from the power base of a state, you're more able to probably chances to get it. And plus, if you if you control that gate, that state, and doing your own thing, you can create your own reparation. See, do you understand what I'm saying? You can just take it. It's about taking it. And you don't have to use a bullet. It's about using your brain and being smart. Taking control of the state of Mississippi, you talk about reparation, you can take it because they get funds from the they get funds from the federal government. You can take your reparation. Don't have to beg. You talk about black business. Bring your business to Mississippi. All the laws that's an obstacle to black business, we are in a position to take all that down. And all you brothers and sisters who are entrepreneurs and business minded, bring uh, bring your bring your skills and your talent to Mississippi. Mississippi can give you low finance loans, all kinds of stuff that we can do as a state. You want a better education from the public school system? Well, now you control the state of Mississippi. You can change the public school system to fit your needs. Plus, you're doing it in a way you're not going to interfere with the white people that's still there or the Asians that's there, nothing you're doing is going to interfere with the lifestyle of anybody that's already there. Only thing you're doing 
is looking out for yourself for a change. Mm -hmm. Gaining power for yourself for a change. That's all you're doing. You're not messing with nobody's life and everything you're doing is 1000% legal under the Constitution of the United States. That's why it would be very difficult for the federal government to come down just to harass the state of Mississippi because we're trying to do something good for ourselves because we are, the state of Mississippi is a state in the United States protected by the federal government. So here you are already in an agriculture type state. You talk about we need better food. Here you go. We can create real organic food. When you buy the apple, it might be a worm in it. When I was growing up, apples had worms in it because we didn't use no kind of pesticides or nothing. See, we have to learn not to be so profit, profit driven. In order to have real organic food, you got you to gotta let the worm have a little bit. Let them have it. It's plenty enough for everybody. But the food is good. It's pure. Bring the soil back to the way it used to be by proper crop rotation instead of putting all these chemicals in it because they're doing the same crops over and over and over again, depleting the soil of what's supposed to be in that soil because they want to keep making money off this particular crop when they know they need to be rotating that stuff. But then they stop doing that because they found ways to use all these synthetic chemicals in order to get that job done. So if these plants and animals that are eating these, these uh, synthetically grown uh, vegetables and, and animals, what do you think that's doing to us as human beings? And you wonder why your children slow. You wonder why your children have autism. You wonder why we can't think at all because our brains aren't being developed properly. As a child, you should, mama, you know you need to be giving your child breast milk. That's the best food on the planet for your child. So I ask brothers, especially these brothers that bash black women, I ask them, are you a, a breastfed baby or are you a Similac baby? They don't never answer because see, look, when I was growing up and most of us was breastfed and we had that close tie to our mother. And uh, I know some of y'all who are sort of on the older side, you, you remember the only thing somebody had to do was say your mama. Now they don't even know your mama. And you get off. Don't talk about my mama. You, you know, you, you end up getting your butt whooped. That's the type. I don't care if your mama was a prostitute. I don't care if your mama was a crackhead. I don't care. You don't talk about my mama. Nowadays, you don't hear that no more. But nowadays, most of these young children are drinking Similac Inframil, these formulas. And so two things is bad. You're not getting the proper nutrition. So you're not getting proper brain development. Right. Because that Similac and an Inframil cannot copy the chemical composition of mama. Plus, when you're next to your mama. Oh, man. Look, I read an article not too long ago. I don't want to get nasty, but this is this, this is how it goes. They was talking about uh, women women's backside. They said that there are chemicals in women's backside that is necessary for the development of the of the child and i didn't know that they are always finding something the woman's breast her backside everything about us as human beings there's a reason for it and so you have so now we have we're developing human beings you're not developing you're not developed properly because you don't have that connection to your mother and you're not getting proper nutrition thus we don't have proper brain development. But you can get all that when you take control of that state and control and grow your own food and make it real organic food. We can change the flow of our, our people, people going into incarceration. As a state, you can even go to the federal government and ask for us for our people who are in asylum and those who are in prisons right now, we can ask for our people who are part, who are former members of the Black Panther Party or any type of uh, activist organization from the 60s or whatever, we can ask for them to be released, give them to the custody of the state of Mississippi and bring our people home 
so they can die in dignity after they fought for our liberation in the best manner that they could. I would rather Huey B. Newton and Dr. King and Malcolm, I would rather them uh, spent some time in prison or whatever, and we could release them now so they could be here with us and enjoy the last of their days among us. And also they be alive so they can see that we as a people have grown to the point and we are really on our way to the liberation that they fought so hard for and was willing to die for. I got a little ways to go, y'all. Are you all right? Y'all all right? I got a little, little taste to go and we'll be done. And I want us to share what is being said this afternoon. I want us to share because I'm going to release this later as a response to Savior's Day, because that's really what this, this uh, Soul Liberation Day really is. It's like a, a, a res response to Savior's Day. I'm going to repost it when the Nation of Islam, Louis Farrakhan, has their um, Savior's Day. Because I'm telling you, and I believe, and it's all with all due respect, this is the best Savior's Day speech you're going to get. We're on time. We have the right knowledge. It's appropriate. If we take action upon this, we can get the job done. Now, look. Y'all hanging? Let's hang just for a little bit, a little bit more. Because I know Savior's Day, they are... Uh, uh, the brothers and sisters that listen to Minister Farrakhan, they listen to him for four, four five hours. <laughs> I'm not going to take four or five hours. I think I think I'm going. I think I just done. It's an hour and a half. Yeah, do your thing, man. Do my thing, brother Gary. Said, let me do my thing. Let me let, let me get up on here and do my thing. Let's we gonna do this. Are you hanging, brother Tali? Without no question. Bro. Okay, brother Talib said he's hanging. Sister Rashida says she's hanging. She she has a little baby. She got to check on though. So uh, so uh, we're gonna keep rolling here, y'all. Just bear with me. I'm telling you, this is this is the best talk you're gonna have in February. Nation of Islam have their uh, Savior's Day convention in February, and you already and you already getting the fire that you really need for the rest of the year. Right now, look. Oh, they tell me to keep rolling, brother Leon said, "Keep rolling." We keep rolling, man. Go ahead, cuz. We we rolling on. We rolling on. Let me get a swig of this this uh water here. Now look, see, look, 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 y'all. We need to prove ourselves worthy of freedom. We need to prove ourselves worthy of the liberation. In our current state, our current mentality, the reason why we can't get nothing going really is because we're not worthy. You call yourself gods. I'm a god and I'm a goddess. And you say that you're kings and you're queens. So this thing that we call Operation Exodus Mississippi, it should be very, very easy to do. It should be easy for a God to take control of a state. It should be easy for the kings and the queens to easy come forth and reclaim their throne. It should be easy to do that. You are God and you're goddess. Now, I understand y'all like those titles. God, you are God. The black man is God, y'all. You know that, don't you? The original man is the Asiatic black man, the God of the universe. You know, we come from Kemet, you know. You know, we're, 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 we're kings and queens. You know, y'all you, know all that stuff, right? And that's good. And that's good. However, you've done nothing to prove and show that you are a God. Because God creates. What have you created, black man? Kings and queens rule over nations and countries. What, what nation, country that y'all rule over? What do you create, God? It's nothing but feel-good rhetoric. 
If you won't feel good rhetoric, I would suggest that you leave here because I'm not about feel good rhetoric. It's going to be real or it's going to be nothing at all. I did not want, when I was locked up, they offered me partial freedom. You know, I will give you a little bit. And, and if you and if you're a good boy, we'll give you a little more. I don't want none of it. If I can't have freedom, I don't want nothing at all. I don't want none of it. And yes, it took a little while before I got the full freedom, but it was well worth it. That's why I'm talking to you right now. Because it's it's freedom or nothing at all. I don't want no little bit of this and a little bit of that. I don't want that. I want all. All of it or nothing at all. So we want we want to put ourselves in position. If you cannot, if you cannot take control of a state, and this state of Mississippi is already in existence, and you can't take control of it, and you a god and a king and a queen, then it makes no sense. Then you were then you want to run around talking about, I want to build my own nation. We're going to go to Africa and build our own nation. You have, how are you going to build your own nation in Africa and you can't do nothing on the land that you know? And, and you think you're going to just go to Africa and do that on foreign soil? That don't even make any sense. But you can't take control of your neighborhood. You can't take control of your town. You can't take control of, your, of a state. But you're going to go to Africa and all of a sudden, this is what's going to happen on foreign soil. And are and are those people going to tolerate you doing? Where are you going to do this at? But see, coming from the power base of a of a of a uh, state, you prove to yourself that you can control government. Because see, this is what they want. They want you to take control of a state, and they want you to fail. Because the first thing they're going to say to us is, see, Negroes can't do nothing. That's what they want you to take over state, and they want you to fail. They want you to do that. There are many Negroes out there who's listening to me right now. That's what they want. Yeah, if y'all do that, y'all ain't nothing but a bunch of Negroes. I hate to disappoint you. And all we need is the right environment. All we need, and see, taking control of that state you produce the right environment. Watch. See, y'all don't believe this. But just the fact that you begin to create a new environment and you begin to inspire. Look, y'all talk about Egypt, Timbuktu and Ethiopia and all these great civilizations. Beautiful and wonderful. But there's nothing like when you do something with your own hand. Nothing like that. Do you know how inspirational that, that would be to our young people when they see, see us taking control of a state and everywhere they go, black folks run this, black folks run that, soul brothers and sisters, they run this, run that. And they looking at us do international trade. We sending our, our, our ambassadors to Africa. Say for instance, as a state, we can send our ambassadors to the Congo because the Congo is one of the biggest countries, nations I heard on the continent. They have plenty of land we could make a nation out of, for real. And we can make a deal. Support the Congo. Support the Congo by what we're doing in the state of Mississippi. And little by little, we start sending our babies and our children, sending them up to start little towns and cities on the land that the Congo get for us because we got this deal with, the, with that African nation of the Congo. And next thing you know, 10, 20 years later, we got an outright nation, the nation that you claim that you want. And I want to say this to us. Look, see, for some of us, we want what we want when we want. It. That's the wrong attitude to have. There are many Caucasian people from the Revolutionary War that never saw this nation become the great nation that it become. But they were willing to die for it. We who are living right now, we can begin this process. 
but we're not going to live to see the ultimate result. The only thing we can do is guide our children in the right direction and they'll take it where it needs to go. But we are the pioneers. We will become the forefathers of a great nation, whether it be right here in America or on the continent, wherever we choose. But this is where it comes from. You got to have a place to start. In this land, Mississippi, it's not gonna work. We need our brothers and sisters to be men and women. And we need to, we need to unify and take the appropriate action. But once you do accomplish this, it's gonna fall apart unless you have the right mindset because I'm going to I'm going to use the, the, the N word the N word people like with that mindset you're not going to get nothing done and you can be comedic and you can be a Christian but y'all still have that N word mindset it's not going to work you have to go to our people who are already residents in the state of Mississippi you have to go to them and explain to them that we have to change our mindset, that we have to have a certain morality, certain laws and things that we can and cannot do. And we got to get up out of this materialistic mindset that we've been given living in this racist nation, so materialistic and learn how to be modest and just modest living and concentrate on the love that a man has for his wife, the love the, the wife has for her husband, and the family have for their children, grandma to the to the to the cousin and so forth. We need to concentrate on love for our personal self and stop tripping on cars and diamonds. When they talk about Africa, look. When they talk about Africa, they always talking about the diamonds and the gold and the oil, those things. You never hear them really. They don't talk about the love of the people. That's your greatest asset is the love of the people. A diamond ring and oil and gold, they can't love you. It means nothing. That gold and diamonds, all that stuff still going to be here when we dead and gone. But that connection that we have to our life, all those things are dead. All these things that we have out, all these things mean nothing if you're not connected to somebody that is alive. Brother Gary is more important to me than gold. Sister Rashida is more important to me than silver. Brother Talib is more important to me than, than uh, money. All of you are more important to me than these material things. That's why I can come to you. You accept me how I am. That's why I can come on video with a suit on. And y'all know sometimes I come on video ain't shaved in days. Because you accept me for the human being who I am. You love me for, if I got something, you love me if I don't. And if I don't have nothing, then you love me enough to share what, what you got with me. We all in this together as family. So within this state of Mississippi, there's a constant teaching. There's a constant bringing suggestion and advice to our people that we got to bring love to one another. We're not going to force, you don't want to force nothing on nobody. If they want to drink beer and get drunk and keep acting silly, so be it. They still want to do such, so be it. But we're trying to really reach the children because the children are the main ones that's going to bring all this to fruition. The only thing we got to do is direct our children in the right direction, just like the racists did their children high up. Unfortunately, they directed their children in the wrong direction. We're going to do opposite than that. Don't you know how, oh, wow. Do you know how full of pride you would be? I know y'all talk about, again, the pyramids. And I heard the brothers talking about uh, all these different things our people supposed to have done in the past or whatever. And you feel so good about that. But can you imagine the pride you would have when we are able to go to, to the Mississippi and basically it's all soul brothers and sisters, we run in the government, we run in the politics, we grow our own food, we got all these thriving businesses and, and all the other states, all the other, all the other 
people around the world looking at us. Here we are, slaves. We was drug dealers and whoremongers and, and, and drunks. And here we are, but we can come together and create this state. And we got international trade going. Do you, don't you know? I know. I mean, don't forget. I'm not telling us not to ignore the great accomplishments of the past, but we are alive right now and we need something big that we can feel proud of. All of us, we do this thing, this campaign called Operation Exodus Mississippi. We do that, all of us get the credit because the way it's designed, every man, woman, and child, even an infant, take that infant, put a seed in that infant's head, go to a farm and take a picture of that infant putting a seed in the ground so when that child gets big, look what you did to create this. All of us, no individual, no organization gets the credit for Operation Exodus Mississippi. Of course, I'm bringing the idea, myself and Brother Tully, of course, I mean, we bring the idea. But all of us get the credit for this. It's about us. Every man, woman, and child. And we become workers. We didn't mind working for the white man, picking cotton. Now you can go to Mississippi and we're going to pick cotton again, but it's for ourselves. Picking corn and tomatoes for ourselves. Oh, man. I remember growing up, I'm, I'm, I am the, uh, I'm the child of a, a sharecropper. There's nothing. Look, y'all. There's nothing like going into the garden and taking a tomato pulling it off the vine and eat that eat that uh, tomato straight off the vine. You don't have to worry about no chemicals or nothing. I didn't even wash the tomato off. I used to go to the garden and pull a turnip off the ground and knock a little of the dirt off and eat it straight raw. There's nothing. Many of our children have never seen a seed go into the ground and then it's produced, it produces the food that that child is going to eat. They've never seen that before. But in Mississippi, every man, woman, and child is going to see them seeds going to the ground, and you're going to produce your own food and build your own houses, plant your own forests, do all that for yourself. Everything that you want to is right here. This is the way to do it. And you're using the law and the politics. You're already in that position. Our brothers and sisters in Mississippi, and perhaps in Alabama, in many places and towns in this country, they are already in those positions. They just really don't know what to do. They don't have a real plan. This is the plan. This is what we're gonna do. This is how we got ourselves. And if we do it, oh man. If the people from Kemet could come back, if the people from Timbuktu could come back and see what we have done in this modern time, they gonna say, damn, we, we built pyramids, but look what they done and see, on top of that, look, look what you have done. You are in the process of destroying racism itself. That's what you're doing. You're creating a sanctuary state, a safe zone for all our people in the 48, 48 states. If they get sick and tired of the hell they're catching in California or New York or Michigan, wherever they are, you create a safe and a sanctuary for our people. And when it, get too, when it gets too populated, then you put your eyes on the prize for Alabama and Georgia and Tennessee, wherever is the sky's the limit. Least to say, for those of us who want to go back to the continent, now you're putting yourself in a position to go to the continent or wherever you, want, you, can, you can do what we want to do. Create that nation to yourself. But the way that y'all doing it now, it's not going to get done. It's not going to get done. It's too small. We need something really, really big to get into this game. Something really, really big. And Operation Exodus Mississippi is that something that is really, really big. We got to think big. We have to use our brain. The only thing I'm doing right now is bringing the foundation because there's going to be obstacles, there's going to be problems. But see, it's not about me. I'm going to ask advice from Brother Gary. I'm going to get advice from Sister Rashida. I'm going to get advice from GL. I'm going to get Advice from Brother Baraki. Oh, I said his name wrong. Bakari. Bakari. <laughs> See? <laughs> you got me. We're going to get advice for each other. We have the talent to get this job done. But in these little groups and organizations, it's not going to get done. It's not enough. 
But we, as a people, we got all, we got we got electricians, we got carpenters, we got uh, uh, architects, we got all the tools, all the talent that we need in order to get this job done. Domestically and abroad, we can get the job done. But right now, like I told you, those of us who are alive today, the only thing we can do is get the process started. And really, to be quite honest, we are we're damaged goods because we are carrying we're carrying the influence of living with races going on 500 years. We got all this little stuff that's that's messed up about us. But when you isolate your children from this bad, nasty society, and they don't, and you 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 deprive them of the of this detrimental behavior that they see around themselves. Our children can get better when you put when you put children in a better environment. The children get better. Matter of fact, even if you put people, grown adults, as old as myself, when you put us in a better environment, we become better. The reason why the people keep getting worse and worse and worse is because they are in a nasty, filthy, corrupt environment. We are in toilet stools, and some of y'all think that your doo doo don't stink. Doo doo stink, okay? We all in the same toilet. Well, see, I don't stink like you do, but you stink. It don't make no difference about that. Well, you smell like pee pee. Well, you smell like doo doo. So what? We all in the same toilet. It don't make no difference. So we're damn is good. So the only thing we can do is understand what we need to what we need to do in order to make our children better, and they will. And because they are, we still influenced by the toilet. They're gonna be stinky. But as time goes on, and we and we do like Spike Lee said, we continue to do the right thing. We start getting cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. And that's the purpose of religion to make you clean, to make you a righteous person. And when you become clean and you become righteous, you bring it to the heaven that your God talk about. You don't have to wait to die. It'll be heaven on earth, right here. Do you know why you catching hell now? Because you got a hellified mind. You got a hellified mindset. But once that mindset change, once your mindset become heavenly, you're gonna produce heaven. But since you since you have a devil type mentality, mindset, then the only thing you can produce is hell. And that's all you're gonna get is hell. But this Operation Exodus Mississippi is taking us out of that. So what you're looking at is a, is a metamorphosis that we have to come through. Because we're nasty and we're ugly right now. And people think that, some people think that caterpillars are ugly creatures. But soon they go and they spin a cocoon around themselves. And then out of that cocoon comes this beautiful creature called a butterfly. And this butterfly is able to defy gravity and fly into the heavens. That's what your scriptures is talking about. You are to go through a metamorphosis. And see, if you didn't know no better, you would think that the caterpillar and the butterfly are two separate creatures, but they're not. The only thing happened was that the butterfly went through a metamorphosis. So we transferred from being a, 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 the N-word, I want to say it, it makes it more dramatic. <laughs> we go from being the N-word to your God. To kings and queens for real. No more talk. You will be running a kingdom. The kingdom of heaven on earth. You'll be ruling. You'll be God. A God in heaven. by Because you produce a, a heaven on this planet. That's what you will be doing. You will be changing, changing the direction of humanity all over this planet. And your scripture goes on to say. Those of you who believe in scripture, it says there, it talks about the heaven on earth, that God wants to create a heaven on earth. But in order to do that, you must let the former thing pass away in order to make all things new. In order to make all things new, you must let the former things pass away. And I'm very sorry for you. I know you don't want to hear this. All things 
pass away because you're not going to need it no more in heaven. The reason why you need Christianity is because you're not in, in heaven. You go to heaven, you don't need Christianity no more. You don't need Islam once you create a hereafter. You don't need that no more. You're already living in the hereafter. Hereafter what? The hereafter you was living in hell. You don't need that stuff no more. So we need to let all those former things pass away. Let it go. That's the reason why nothing new can come because y'all holding on to something that is old. You don't, you're not gonna need that no more. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad even said, for those of you who are in the nation of Islam, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught that the Islam that we have right now is not going to go into the hereafter. It's not gonna be part of the hereafter because you're making something new. You're not gonna need that no more. You're not gonna, those are crutches. Those books was designed to put you in the situation that we're looking at right now. And you may not believe it, believe it or not. I am influenced by Quran. I am influenced by the Bible. My interpretation and the way I look at things is just different from the way that you do. And I'm telling you that your God has answered your prayers. Do you think that I'm smart enough to bring something like this to you? I ain't that smart, y'all. To leave. Are you that smart? No. <laughs> so he's, he said he ain't that smart either. So if you believe, so there's another thing in the Quran. The Quran said that God uses whom he pleases. So I know that you want maybe Minister Farrakhan to bring this message, or maybe Tariq Nasheed, or Cynthia G, or one of y'all other favorite folks, maybe even Sister Rashida. <laughs> <laughs> I know y'all probably wanted one of y'all favorites to, to bring this message up, but it came through here. And God chooses whom he pleases. So it makes no difference about what you like and don't and dislike. God chose me to do this. God chose to leave and me to get together one night and just throwing ideas around. And so this idea has influenced people like Brother Maurice Muhammad. Brother Maurice Muhammad loved the nation of Islam. But you never, I've never seen Brother Maurice Muhammad with the, with the energy level and the vigor until he heard this idea of Operation Exodus Mississippi. Now he's all excited and full of energy. There's a reason for that. Because we are on time. There was a, 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 a subject that the Muslims used to say all the time, the time and what must be done. We have entered the time and what we are going to do and get it done. You should know, if you know what the time and must be done, then you should get the job done or you're doing. Why are we still doing things? Why are we still doing? What do you mean? If you know what the time is and what must be done, then do it. But clearly something is wrong here. It's not getting done. I will make all things new. So Operation Exodus Mississippi is just more, much more than a sanctuary city or a, a town or a state or even a safe haven. What you and I are doing, what you and I brothers and sisters are actually doing, we are actually changing the world we're changing the direction of humanity by our example and what we're doing in this effort, Operation That's what you will be doing. You and I will be the catalyst and the foundation of heaven on earth. I don't know about the heaven after the, the, the heaven that you go to after you die. I don't know nothing about that. But I would guarantee you, once you create heaven on earth, you're not going to be in a rush to go to the heaven in the sky. Because it's going to be real good and beautiful right here, living the only life that you know. Because you don't know nothing about that. You hope after you die that you go to this wonderful place. And I hope that we do. But in the meantime, dealing with our reality and what we know, the same way that men created hell, we can create heaven. And the ones who can get the job done are those who are the descendants of slaves born in America, having dark skin, those are 
of whom I call the people of soul. And the Bible said, we are the meek that will inherit the earth. There's nobody more meek than a slave. Everything has been taken away from a slave. There's no more humility left. Everything has been your humanity, your, 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 your being ashamed. Everything has been taken away from you. There's no more person on this planet more meek than a slave. And the meek shall inherit the earth. And here we are. We've been given the tools to get that job done. We will, we will in our activity, destroy racism, sexism, and all these isms, and all this crap that's detrimental. And I want to say this finally in my conclusion. For those of you who, who are worried about the homosexuals, <laughs> for those of you who are worried about the race mixing, those of you who are worried about the crack addicts and the detrimental behavior, don't you know when you create a better environment, you don't have to worry about this stuff. All those things will begin to disappear because the environment that created those things will no longer exist. <laughs> so you don't have to trip off stuff like that. You don't have to worry about the crack addicts and all these different things. All we will, re we will return to what many of you call a natural state. Now, I know some of y'all want that right now and you're not gonna get it because when you die, the homosexual is still gonna be here. And when you die, you know, the race mixing is still gonna be here and the crack addiction and the other drug addiction and the alcohol, it's still going to be here. But what we're doing, what we're doing is for ourselves, but it's for our people in the future. And we will become the forefathers and we'll become the greatest generation ever produced among our people. We will be the forefathers. I think that's a great honor to be somebody like, you know, like the way they honor George Washington, Ben Franklin, that's the way we're gonna be honored. They're gonna put Sister Rashida's face on, a, on one of our dollar bills and coin. Brother <laughs> Gary's face will be on a dollar bill. My face will be, I don't wanna, I don't want that, I want a monument myself. <laughs> y'all, y'all can have the dollar bill and the coins. I, I'll just take a mind, you know, like, like, like Mount Rushmore. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> you know, I'll take that, you know. But that's, that's the direction we're taking ourselves, brothers and sisters. Hey, Russia, got people from Russia looking at us. And don't trip off the numbers. That don't mean nothing. Because there's nothing out here. Y'all come to the right place. This was the best place to be right now. So with that said, I hope that I, I've inspired us a little bit to uh, to support this this activity and uh, encourage people to subscribe to this channel so that you can keep up to date. And I will continue to send information to those who are on my email list. And for those who are not on the email list, uh, just go into the description box and uh, all of our contact information is in the description box. And... Uh, like I say, get people to subscribe to the channel. Uh, the main thing that we want to do, there are those who have come to me and uh, ask about giving a donation. Right now, we're not taking donations, but what you can do, you can help us promote. You can put an ad. You can put an ad in your local newspaper. You can make a YouTube video. You can send the information to uh, your church or uh, some club. It's about it's about um, promotion. Now, if we do decide to come and ask about um, uh, donations, the first thing I want to do, I want to put billboards up on all the major highways in Mississippi. I think there's like four or five major interstates. So that's like five billboards. I'm, I'm going to call and see how much that will cost and put like um, maybe 10, 10 billboards on major highways and people be passing on what what is that what is operation hey what is that what is that so we can get our people the residents there get them to talking because if they don't get on board the soul train we're done anyway but i truly believe i got look i have a really really good feeling because i started not to to really officially kick this off 
But after I met Sister Rashida, <laughs> personally, and after some other things that has happened, I said, well, why not go for it? And uh, I put, I placed the, oh, how could I forget this? And I hope Brother Omar Shabazz is here. I really want to send a shout out to Brother Omar Shabazz for that beautiful, I think it's a beautiful promotional video that we played, you know, before we came on air. I think that was the bomb. When I, I'm going to tell you, Brother Omar, when I first saw that video, the first time I saw it, tears start coming out of my eyes. I'm like, wow. This is this is this is one of this is magnificent. Nothing, nothing is better than this this Operation Exodus Mississippi. This is the real solution. I'm I'm available to anybody to have a debate. You're not gonna last long. You're not gonna last long because this this idea encompasses so much. It sort of reminds me of Bruce Lee's Yi Kun Do. You know having no form, it just fits. Whatever, it's like water. Whatever vessel it falls into, that's, it just takes the shape of that. And all these other things is just so rigid. Not only are they rigid, but brothers and sisters, it's not enough. We need something big to get into this sick game called race. We need something really big. Something big that it can inspire the 40 to 70 million soul brothers and sisters in this nation. Something big that we can be proud of. And what, because we can get the job done. We got the energy, we got the money, we got the talent, everything that we need, everything, everything is available. We can get this job done. <coughs> Something big that we can be proud of. We got it going on. So again, thank you for listening. I want to thank uh, Brother Gary for being here with us in the, in the, in the room with me. Of course, my beautiful dark skinned activist sister Rashid. Oh, you welcome. I'm glad that you're here. Oh, and my brother, brother Talib is here with me. Come on, brother Talib. See if we can share the screen a little bit. See if you can scoot over here. Where brother Talib? Come on, brother Talib. Can we can, can you can you get in there? You're gonna have to go a little bit further. Come on. A little bit. Hey, where's brother Talib at, man? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right I want right. to thank Brother Talib. You know you, uh, your, uh, excuse me, uh, to leave you, I just got on my uh, cell phone. I was having issues because I was in, in a restaurant right. and I wanted to use my phone when I got the notification on uh, Google Hangout and I couldn't get in. Right. So I'm just letting you know you can get on the phone as well. Use your personal phone as if, I mean, I ain't trying to tell y'all what you do. I was just giving you a no, suggestion. I need that information. I don't oh, know yeah, how, how yeah. you do it. Do it now? How do, how do you actually, is there a, a it's simply, it's just If you have the Google Hangout on, as an app on your mobile phone, Mm -hmm. As long as you have that hyperlink that you provided through uh, Facebook Messenger, you hit on that with your phone, with the Google Hangout app is um, applied on your phone. You simply go in there and boom, you join. But you, of course, what I was trying to do, I was trying to get into your room, I think, when it wasn't actually activated. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's what happened. So see, if you look right here, I got that's my mobile phone. The one, the one I'm speaking right now is through my laptop. Okay. Just let you know if the future thing, man. But oh, go ahead and continue. I don't want to disrupt y'all things as I already did. Yeah, we yeah. Appreciate you, brother Gary. I don't yeah. Mean, brother. yeah, we needed an information. Hey man, that was excellent. Hey man, excellent, excellent. Uh now that was that was outstanding, man. A, a, a good detailed uh I wouldn't even call it a summary, a run through about the synopsis about uh what uh, Exodus uh, uh Mississippi's all about. Uh what else? Uh and uh I think that was a good job, man. I mean, I've, I've learned more about it than I had uh, uh, the previous times that I have part, or engaged in, in listening to. Uh, I mean, you did a good job then, but this right here outlined and detailed and highlighted about a lot of the uh, about the uh, the campaign that y'all are trying to uh, spearhead through. So, good job on that, brother. Thank I just you. want to continue on that, Thank and you. I'm not trying to butter you up any. You know me. But good job on detailing it, brother. Still have some butter over here, brother. <laughs> <laughs> good God, party, man. Good job, man. Thank you. Oh, matter of fact, brother Gary, while yeah. I'm here, you know I gotta have you as a special guest. You remember that now? Absolutely. I'll talk. Okay. 
Absolutely. There's, I don't think there's no need for me to say anything or whatever. I know, you know, you know me and whatever and stuff. There's nothing I can, uh, I can say, but just sit back and listen. Yes, I've learned more each and every time that, um, you know, when I listen to y'all and that's all I can do. You know, if I have something to input that I can contribute, by all means, I will say so. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Better believe it. You leave looking over there like, man, you mean bugging somebody, man. Do your thing, man. Oh, wait, 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 wait. All right, all right, y'all got my full intention. This is, it's not like that. It's all good, brother. Yeah. Right. Hey, you know, right. you know, Talib just, just roll that way, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm a nice guy, you know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, bro, what do you, what do you, what do you, uh, man, I mean, I, I really, man, I mean, uh, brother Talib. Broke that down. That was real, real good. If you don't mind, um, I don't know if you have something to say before I say anything. But what do you, what do you have to add on to what Brother Talik was talking about? Um, excellent, man. Thank you. Hey. What I what I want to add on to it is that um, mm -hmm. basically, you know, the stuff I even be pointing out in my own videos or on Hangout, that basically uh, comes all together. You know, um, under one umbrella, but um, I want to just say this: that we need it. This is important because right now I live in the state of Nebraska, okay. And Nebraska is not that many black people there, you know. And um, except where in Omaha, it's just a few more, but still, it's like you know one percent in that state. You know, it's like 1% of us in that state. And um, I'm going to tell you this. I'm not one to criticize a lot of our people who decide to uh, go and move outside the unquote, quote, black community. Okay, because, uh, I mean, if I had a family, now I'm just a single person, okay? If I had a family and I'm living in a, community where it's constant shooting going on now, okay? Constant killing, constant robbing, rape, all these other crimes that's taking place in our communities. And nothing is effectively be, being done by, by the people in the community about it. But they want to criticize those for taking their resources and going over to the suburbs or what they want to call going to be a, among the white folks or whatever. <clears throat> I'm going to say this. I used to be one of those type of brothers, of individuals, rather to say. And um, I, I look at it like this. If a person needs to be safe, especially raising kids, you know what I'm saying? Without them going out in the front yard worrying about if they're going to be caught up in the slew of bullets because of a shootout between some niggas over drug territory or whatever the case is, or their grandmother can't go out and empty the garbage can because she might get raped at 71. You know, I'm talking about stuff now as far as where I come from originally, okay? And I mean, this ideal, you know what I'm saying, uh, in, in a paradigm manner covers all that to know where our elderly could finally feel protected in their last days on earth. Where our children could definitely be protected. Our women for, for sure could be protected, okay? And everybody, including us as brothers, you know, we ain't got to run to no another nationality, unquote, to feel safe around or go to another state, even somewhere further west, like Western where I'm at, like Montana or Wyoming or Idaho, you know, which is known to have a heavy presence of white supremacy going on, you know, and, and stuff like that. Blacks are moving to these states. They're moving to Utah just because they want to get away from what they call the urban setting here in America because of stuff like that. Like where I'm at, in the link, particularly in the Lincoln area, which is the state capital, that's like one hour from uh, Omaha. But anyway, it's a lot of blacks leaving, like coming from Chicago, coming from Detroit, 
or coming from even far as California and other different places, Texas and whatnot, that's flocking there. And now they trying to mess that up, but see them white folks, of course, they not gonna have that. Number one, that's the state capital. You know, if you gonna do that, go to Omaha or just get up out of Nebraska in town because they not gonna have that. You know, and uh, my thing is, is this, is that, you know, I, I want to be, uh, you know, community orientated when it comes to us as dark skinned descendants of slaves born in America. But the reality is, I hate, I hate it, but I couldn't even sit in my apartment and leave out the door in Detroit a few years ago and have a cup of coffee on the steps of my apartment building without worrying about a drive by or getting robbed or something, okay? I could do that in Lincoln, Nebraska, and I'm not saying this to brag because it's a low-income neighborhood I live in, all right? But still, the paradigm is different. And it should be like that in all Black communities, wherever we at, as far as being mostly populated in the United States, especially in places like Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and Florida, or, or South Carolina, and stuff like that. So I feel like this, that we need to definitely create a reality where we ain't got to keep running and facing and being stuck out like a thorn mm -hmm. around all these racist white folks. And of course, like what I deal with in Nebraska, because I mean, you know, they got definitely ways of showing they racist. And I have to really, I'm going to be honest with you. And I'm not saying this because I'm so terrified at the situation. Let's not get it wrong, but the reality is we're living in America, okay? And racism is well alive and it exists. But the thing is, is that I have to walk on pins and needles in a way of saying it. That, or a better lack of term of word, just, just to watch myself because I'm around the majority of them. But I'm at the same time, I'm not going to kiss the ass either. I mean, if things get too far gone to where I feel violated or disrespected or even discriminated against, I'm going to still speak up. You know, you ain't got that many type of Negroes in that area like that because those ones that is in that area, they like to try to get along with them. You know what I'm saying? But see, I mean, but I still live in, I still try to deal with them on a, a diplomatic level without me um, having to resort to what they think we are anyway when they stereotype us as being violent, when they stereotype us as being aggressive, you know, but I do do what I need to do to abide by the laws and do what I need to do while I'm there, okay? But like I said, if we develop this reality called Operation Exodus Mississippi by straight up getting it off the ground and actually putting it at task as far as emotion of this becoming a real reality where people can look forward to, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I don't think, I think even the black people that's in the certain parts like Walmart, Nebraska, Wyoming, Idaho, Oregon, they'll flock toward Mississippi, you know. Excuse my sweat, it's so daggone hot up here. <laughs> but anyway, like I said, you know, uh, my thing is, is that I just rather, like I said, I rather, uh, thanks brother, I rather, uh, you know, be back around my people because it's natural. Like the brothers say, it's natural. So I'd rather be back around my people. I'd rather be back around, of course, no offense, sister, my beautiful sisters. <laughs> uh, and even the uh, younger generation, you know, who I miss, you know, uh, that's that's in the category of my, people like my grandies that I could watch grow up. You know, and not grow up as thugs and criminals and all that kind of stuff. You know, and this reality 
Operation Exodus Mississippi calls for that. Mm -hmm. and, and so this is what I want. And I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, this thing get, get to popping for real. Like I said, as far as getting off the ground, I'm making immediate prompt reservations to get up out of Nebraska to come back east. You know, because, uh, I mean, I'm really tired of living just, you know, I wanna, you know, and maybe at, at, at being in my early 50s, I'm able to say that I stand more of a chance being longer on earth than I would have if I'd have stayed in Detroit or if I'd have stayed in uh, Lexington, Kentucky or Toledo, Ohio or something like that. You know, because of the demographics of what goes on in them type of places that I just. But uh, you know, like I said, I shouldn't have to go around white folks to feel that way. I shouldn't have to go around Asians to feel that way. I should be able to be around my own people feeling that way. You know, especially if I only got twenty or thirty more years to live at the age I, I am anyway, and at the age that brother Talik is. Why are you mentioning mine? Oh, excuse me, excuse me, my, my brother. Well, I mean, the, the same age bracket. I just put it that way. All right, brother. All right, no offense, but yeah, okay, I got you. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's like, uh, man, but I, I, I'm serious, though. I mean, it's all about uh, love and unity. Yes. For us as a people, you know, I mean, the halves and the half knots, it's all about, like you say, uh, us not degrading each other because we have less or mm -hmm. judging each other about how much more we got and all that. See, integration, that really opened up, the, integration opened up the doors for that. No disrespect to our uh, dark skin ancestors of the civil rights generation, but integration, unfortunately, opened up them doors, which more so divided us on class level. So by that happening, you know what I'm saying? I feel like this. If we get in a sanctuary, like taking control of a state such as Mississippi, that can evaporate. If we all work together in a common collective way, like I said earlier when I opened up on air, you know, as far as us uh, coming together and throwing away our, throwing our differences to the side, and like I heard the sister speaking earlier, you know, even if we disagree with each other, still agree with each other on which could help us to go down that road to where it'll be a light at the end of the tunnel, especially for our future generations. And that's what that's about. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to take up the whole show, rest of the show, but... Uh, what, what is your uh, reply back to that, my brother? Or sister, what do y'all have to say? Because it seems his brother's busy. He wants to be the conductor. Go ahead. No, you all right, brother, doing what you're doing? Oh, cool. oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> it was getting ready to get close to bringing this. To oh, you know, I made a, oh, man. Uh, man, I'm, I know I'm going to be in trouble. I know I'm going to be in trouble. With the women, I want to send a shout out to my sister Ann. She's in the in the chat room. Got to send out a uh, uh, um, shout out to sister Ann. Should have done that in the beginning. How could I, I didn't send? I didn't mention sister Ann. I know I didn't. I know I didn't. I meant you. I'm sorry, sister Ann. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And you know, and I, and I didn't send a shout out to my sister, sister Noble, sister Noble Levine. I didn't. I, well, I'm in trouble. I know I'm gonna get it. I know they're gonna. You didn't say my name. You said all the more raggedy people's name. And you didn't say my name. You know how women is. Oh, wow. I can hear it now. Oh, they might have a little mercy on me. This is a try to get myself together. I don't know why. I should have I should have put it, put it on my notes to make sure I get everybody. But uh yeah, we're getting ready to flow out of here, but I want to also give my I just want to yeah. say one thing. Hey, see this button on this brother here? Lift up yeah. the button. Malcolm, of course. Yeah, this button with Malcolm. I just want to say one positive thing about the state of Nebraska is that I'm proud to at least be living 
even though I'm living in a majority white populated state, like I say, but in a way it makes me feel proud because a brother like this was produced there. Mm -hmm. the, not too many people know that, but he was before he became Detroit was Red. Lincoln? No, it was Omaha. Oh, Omaha. Omaha. And they yes, and they do got a, a community center named after him and some type of kind of monument oh. in the house born in Omaha. If you ever pass through while you're on the road, brother, you might want to stop and check that out in Omaha. You too. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, with that said, we're going to pass the mic and see, get get the last few words from my sister, Sister Rashida. Sister Rashida, Mike, <laughs> Mike belongs to you, sister. Well, thank you. I just want to say I really enjoyed um, listening to what everybody has to say. Um, I'm actually looking forward I'm a super detail oriented person. So mm -hmm. now that you've opened up, you know, the foundation of what Operation Mississippi is all about, summarize it. I'm looking forward to an in-depth um, look at it in terms of the details of how everything will be mapped out. Because I think it's a, you know, li just listening to what you're saying, listening to the brother speak, um, there's a lot of black people all around the United States that want out of whatever, whatever. So a lot of us are in misery. Yes. So, uh, I mean, we talk about the next generation. I mean, it's, it's, it seems to me it's getting more miserable as the generations go on. And that's the irony is, you know, you look at, you talk about the civil rights movement, which I do respect all the brothers and sisters who sacrificed and, and, and did what they needed to do for black people. But like the brother just pointed out, um, one of the uh, the impact of the civil rights movement was a class system. Um, and I'm not too sure if we would have avoided that living in America. I'm not too sure, but that's a very good point. There's so many thought provoking things that came up. So all, all of this makes me want to know the details, the how, when, what, who, mm -hmm. the details of how this stuff will be mapped out. So I'm very interested in that next chapter in the in the Operation Mississippi campaign. I'm interested. Can you help me? Well said. Hey, uh, hey uh, remember, I remember you're, hey, uh, Talit, you don't even realize, man, on YouTube, 11 years ago, when you conducted your first radio show on Blog Talk Radio. Can you hear, y'all hear me? Yeah, yes, hear sir. Mm -hmm. I think it was 11 years ago, and it was, it was me and you had a little, uh, we were bumping heads a little bit over some, over some goddamn, um, uh, over potato salad, basically. <laughs> over the, the lunar moon. <laughs> the, the lunar, yeah. Yeah, we kind of went at it. Man. Uh, it wasn't real serious. And then after a week, you you made a video of me, I made a video of you, and then uh, we set aside, we reconciled, and then you uh, got me on the talk show. But yeah. the, the thing that uh, that I was discussing and I've said this about three months ago when I was in that hotel and what have you stuff, when I was talking about reactionary and proactive. Yeah. Uh, you were speaking about it, you know, just the, as, as your personal progression that you have transformed yourself as I have, and mm -hmm. as brother, uh, you know, cause uh, me and uh, brother Tlaib come back from the school of a teacher mm -hmm. back 25 years ago, and we kind of emancipated ourselves from it. Mm -hmm. And I was speaking about what you touched on is that you had to, get rid of a lot of the symbolic speak talk that was reactionary, but it wasn't tangible. It didn't have no effect in the reality because like I said, a lot of times as a Demo as a group of people here historically here in the United States uh, for centuries is that, I mean, we're, we're deprived people historically, systematically, institutionally, evasive, implicitly, explicitly. Uh, we, we 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 tend to uh, retreat and seek refuge to an idealistic canopy. A lot of us do, and, and we and, and remember. And I'm speaking about like when you speak about integration about Martin Luther King to lead. I was speaking on that radio talk show 11 years ago. That us black folks, uh, we tend to seek refuge when we can't do things against the government or respond or elevate ourselves from it. We tend to retreat to I, uh, objectification, not objectification like you do in the college field, uh, but objectification on where we treat things that are untangible, things that are abstract concepts that we can't touch, but yet we worship and we treat it as if it's something that is concrete. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Brother Talib was just saying, you know, like 
the white man and this and that. I was like that 15 years ago uh, about the chakras and kundalini. And not to dismiss those kind of things. Those things are very good metaphysically, but those things are subjective. And I believe that relies on personal uh, or personal testimony. And those things are arbitrary. Uh, but what I was saying on the radio talk show is that Martin Luther King, even though we can debate, I even said that on the radio 11 years ago, we can debate whether the boule and all these people uh, infiltrated and it caused us, you know, because black folks, when we look, when we's under the Jim Crow law and the separate but equal thing back historically and under systematically racism um, back in the South and the what have you, though that we had our, they had their foot on our neck, when we look at the family unit, our occupation, our education, because in our education back in segregation is that the the, the board the, the school boards had black folks teaching under segregation. And uh, what I was saying is uh, I understand integration. When we integrated, we compromised a lot of, uh, of you know, the, you know, with, with the ramifications that we see with the breaking of the you know, because of liberal laws and what have you in the six. But anyways, to get back to reactionary and proactive, is that what Brother Tlaib is actually doing, he had to shed a lot of this stuff, this fantasy stuff, in some in some degree, and we have to look at things that are realistic. You know what I'm saying? And he had to shed and discard a lot of these things that are too, again, objective, the abstract. And the political ploy is that, you know, with the demographic in Mississippi, because when we look at the the, uh, the statistics and category uh, as a state, Mississippi ranks e either last or overall in all the 50 states of the United States or 46 or what have you. Most of the time they're, in the, they're either last or second to last. So God, I kind of lost my train of thought, but listening to this, the campaign of what y'all doing, again, I'm not saying that to butter y'all up, you know what I'm saying? to toot your horn, but in, in, from where I'm coming from, I do think it's very viable. Brother Talib and Brother Talib is aware that it's, a ver it's very difficult. You know, a dog that shit fast don't last long. It ain't gonna happen overnight. Again, that's the reason why he used the metaphorical thing about the caterpillar. Caterpillar is very ugly. Mm -hmm. But a caterpillar has to go through his metamorphosis of looking ugly, which is equivalent to it's going to get ugly. It gets worse before it gets better. And we have to share a lot of our differences. It's just the same thing when I was speaking about speaking to Sister um, uh, Rashida and how uh, uh, Brother Talit, rel relative to that, they have their differences, but their friendship and their harsh, I mean, their friendship is not hampered by their differences. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm, I've kind of been rambling a little bit, but that was just my little input on it. I, uh, uh, and about Nebraska, oh my God, I, I was up in Nebraska about three months ago. My goodness, man, that place right over there is like cooking chicken without seasoning salt down there. <laughs> I was down there, looked like uh, Molly Ringwall from um, uh, what's that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's no folks down there, man. They ain't got no man. I've been around all kind of states. That's what I do is travel. But Kansas and Nebraska, yes. <laughs> man, God, lay them folks down there, boy. They just so bland. That that uh, folks have been the safe haven of or so what sanctuary for our ancestors who escaped slave oppression and Jim Crow from the South. A lot of people don't yeah. know about that part of our history, but the Midwest, the, the deep Midwest was supposed to have been that a frontier, you know, for us to be able to get away from that type of oppression. But we saw what happened in places like Tulsa, Oklahoma. With the Black Wall Street thing, and uh, even in Omaha, matter of fact, next year it'll be 19 years when they lynched the brother mm -hmm. or they snatched him up out of a court building in the uh, downtown Omaha and they lynched him, of course, because of you know the common narrative that a white woman accused him of uh sexually assaulting her, you know. Mm -hmm. And the matter of mm -hmm. fact, if you look at that picture when you show the brothers corpse being burnt where he laying back not the brother that's oh, yeah. hanging that one was in Texas but yeah. one with the brother uh, hmm. is laying back you know what I'm saying after they didn't burnt them and mutilated them that was in Omaha right. so I mean it's crazy but yeah 
that 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 state that in that area definitely has a history that uh you know people would like kind of uh use identical as to the way our people's history in the south is because i mean it's almost kind of like that yeah more so than i've seen in other areas in the country but that there that comes closer to the way that our people were mutilated and lynched and all that in the south so i mean it's like like a brother told me and uh because of anonymity out of respect for his status or whatever but he did tell me this when i first moved there over four years ago and he looked at my kentucky state id he said look man you might have came a little further north but <laughs> you know what i'm saying that's it <laughs> And he ain't have to say no more than that. And since then, I've seen what his point was. Hey, real quick too, well said. Well, uh, and, and also I, I feel what uh, uh, Brother Smith was talking about, he's not trying to make this campaign with exclusion. You know, I'm not following homosexuality. Uh, I understand that uh, the potential risk of having white folks. I mean, it's really too impossible to have white folks. We cannot interact. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember Sister Soldier said that a long time ago. We're not speaking about a physical separation. We're talking about a mental um, uh, separation. You see what I'm saying? Of understanding that we retain our own cultural identification and other social stratification of who we are. You know what I'm saying? Because it is, it, 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 I mean, you, Mississippi, we have, I mean, I'm, I, it is a, there's a social cultural dimension to it. The folks of Mississippi, they are a southern, southern state. Mm -hmm. And they are in lasered. They're entrenched and they're embedded by the Southern tradition of Christianity. If you go over there and start talking all that uh, pro whatever and stuff, you're going to immediately cut them off. They don't want to hear that. Brother, that me, me and you, when we, we and me, me and you met in person, he's from Mississippi. He likes a lot. Of his, he's very open minded. He is very open minded. I mean, we talked for three hours when we uh, went we down to Laredo, Texas. He asked me question. He listened. But he still has that. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But he is a strong Christian thing because it's been facilitated and it's been orchestrated through tradition of that culture in the South, especially Mississippi. Those folks are very religious. It's like I said, if you go over there, start talking that Dr. Khalid Muhammad stuff with 50 dudes with um, black boots and you march up to Mississippi, shoot, all they got to do is have one dude come over there and raise his hand and say, Jesus Christ. And doggone, and 90% of them folks. So you got to be, I mean, I like your, your approach. You know, I see what you're saying because you've been called a coon. You're, 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 you're probably, perhaps you probably been called a, you're, you're, a, you're homosexual. Yeah. See, I understand the strategic of why you're doing that because you understand the modern, uh, I mean, the modern um, um, condition of that. You know, uh, if you can't make that approach like we did back in the 1960s or come with a Malcolm X approach. We're living in 2018 is next to impossible. So it's just to mobilize the political thing, having awareness. And so what, the I mean, maintain your religion in some sense, but we have to emancipate and, and connect ourselves to reality in, some, in a strong degree because we're relying too much on the supernatural or these metaphysical terminology things to rescue us from, from our demise rather than seeing our, our our relation to reality and then do things that we can implement or make things that are applicable that we can usher things um re realistically as a result by investing on things that we do i mean in reality and ultimately it would have this incentive and reward and then we start gradually seeing um, progress and what happens so let me just shut the hell up now and i know you got things to do i appreciate you Allow me to say what I had to do. Hey, Rashida, yes, love I your energy, woman. I love your energy. I could just tell you. <laughs> Thank you. Love your energy, what have you, sis. I know you're a very smart woman, too. Again, <laughs> I'm not tooting your horn because he knows me. I go off, and if I don't feel right about a person, shoot, yeah. I, I shoot. They want to talk a two cent talk with me, I give them a million dollar ass whip, and I'm not trying to toot my horn. <laughs> I love your energy, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm real. But Tilly, do your thing. I mean, Tilly, do your thing, brother. Yes, sir. I thank you. Yeah, I, I thank you. I thank you. Thank you too, brother. I'm glad that you was here. And uh, don't, I'm not thanking you for allowing me to talk. Thank you for giving us your time yes, to do what you were doing to, to, to uh, 
to out to give your provide your outline about your um your your mission and your campaign, brother. Thank you for uh, for giving us your time. So thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. And I, and I still thank you for being here because I really did want you. I had talked to you earlier. I did want you to be here with me. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, thanks, uh, Sister Rashida. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, Brother Talib for being here uh, yes, this sir. weekend. And I thank to all everybody. Like I said, those of you who are listening now and in the, in the, in the, in the in the audience, those on Facebook, I'm not going to forget my Facebook friend, those in the, in the chat room, appreciate it. And uh, I think we had a really nice day. I enjoyed myself. I did. We last, serious, we had last. And, you know, what's that? How that song go? I'm glad we had this time yes, together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just, just want to add to it, man. I would like to just add one last thing. In the future, I hope uh, on my future travel journeys that I am able to go around with this brother to different areas and different states while reaching out to our people with this uh, Operation Mississippi campaign, campaign platform. And hopefully I'll run into you, brother Gary, and also you, Sister Rashida. Yeah. Because I, I, I mean, people that are like y'all that are in sync totally with what we're doing commonly it's a common accord collective thing um i don't mind dealing with y'all i mean i really i'm gonna just say this straight up I, and i told brother talit this and i i'm not gonna be shy of this but i don't care to be dealing with a whole bunch of negroes at this point <laughs> because of our people's mental condition i've seen it even in traveling here yeah. In the Greyhound bus depots, like in Kansas City, on my way here. It, oh man, it's crazy. Our people is, ooh, look. I, I, I'm just like this. The only thing I could do is, like I still been doing, is just be patient and deal with our people and and hope that we get this thing going as far as getting this campaign of Operation Exodus Mississippi off the ground so that we can actually build a new reality mm -hmm. and we can live finally in peace among each other mm -hmm. and started talking about so much trying to live in peace with e with other people who don't obviously want to live in peace with us. So we got to learn how to live with each other in peace first anyway before we could even go that route. But uh, I'm just glad to have y'all on this uh, chat, this live chat. And uh, I thank my brother, uh, Talik, because if it wasn't for him, I'm going to tell you, you know, and you know, brother uh, Gary, <laughs> as far as when I said bunk uh, black consciousness, I was totally done with our people at that point. Oh, wow. No, I wasn't done. I was just done with the. I, I'm, not, I'm not done with it. I, just, I, I mean, I, I know what you're saying, but out as far as the black conscious thing, period. After I left that, yo, I wasn't done with us as a people because I seen somewhere in my gut feeling that it was some hope for us that one day we can raise, rise up out these ashes that we find ourselves in. But what what I'm trying to explain is is that I was actually. I was done with that black conscious thing mm. to the point where I feel like it it, it kind of really was driving me to the point of craziness. I'm gonna just oh, you gotta you gotta go into more detail about that one day. We gotta, <laughs> hey, 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 I don't mind. I don't mind. <laughs> I, in fact, we go, we gonna have a future. We gonna when we have our one of our future uh live chats. Uh remember to bring bring that back up, and I will definitely uh remember that. And if you got to remind me, remind me, and I would definitely go into that. Because Brother Gary, me and you both know, we've been down that similar road, you know. <laughs> I got my shit together. And it's in this mass common knowledge, so you know. <laughs> Whether people agree with it or not, everybody in the public know, the media, social media, even mainstream media know about what me and Brother Gary came from. <laughs> so it ain't no, uh, you know, secret. <laughs> yeah. 
It's, it's everything. That's a true example. That was a true <laughs> example of being indulged in that ide idealistic thing. Yeah. Uh, being embedded in that kind of stuff. But then in reality, shit, our whole our world was in a disarray. And then when I emancipated myself from it, man, I mean, I prospered. And that's my biggest thing is I try to tell everybody, man, get your shit first, right first. Right. You know, I focus just like you were saying. I mean, I mean, I got that video when I was speaking about the white man. I mean, uh, get yourself right first. You know what I'm saying? Empower yourself and what have you. I detached myself from focus on um, uh, uh, what was I doing? I was, you know, and a lot of my brothers and sisters, man. I mean, back in 2000, what we cats are doing, hell, I was with Lord Abba, Sabir Bay, and King Noble. Uh, Saab Netter back in 2000 and shit, man. And this was in 2000, not 2008. But anyway, I'm talking. Um, Brother Talib got something he got to do. Yeah. 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 Once again, brother. Once again, brother Gary, it's my pleasure. And uh, also, sure. Coach Sheeta, it's my pleasure also. And we will be getting together, hopefully in the future, definitely. All right. And y'all have a good one, there, Rashida. Uh, yes, Talib. Sir. Brother Talik, right, right. love, man, y'all and ladies. Everybody. We out of here, and I, I yes, like sir. I like these uh, brother Gary and sister Rashida because uh, they keeps it real. That's why we together, without a doubt. That's it. what I like. Right, yeah. but that, hey, you know what I said? I tell everybody, everybody has misappropriated that word, keeping it real. Mm -hmm. Don't be real, be honorable. Be honorable. There you go. Kill yourself. Kill yourself, yourself so you can live. Get up out of here and get on my Facebook and do some honorable stuff right now. Cause oh, uh, <laughs> what happened? It's gonna be nice. What happened? If y'all want to, but I'm very glad to be on here. But I got some fire here. I can get off my chest yeah. here. What happened on Facebook? <laughs> what happened on Facebook? Yeah, right, uh, yes. Rashida, what do you say about Facebook? 